Hi again and guys and welcome back to another review from the first Test Drive Unlimited game which of course I recently spoke about in the podcast here on the channel Beards and Cars as one of my most influential racing games of my teen years especially but just growing up in general and this time we're returning once again to review another bike. Now, there aren't a huge amount of bikes in the game, but the ones that we do have tend to be very specifically good at certain things, and I would definitely say that this is one of those. Now, there were technically two Triumph models, if I recall correctly, in the first TDU game. One of them was a sport bike, which was a DLC. I believe that was the Daytona 955i, if I recall correctly, and that was pretty good. Still was no Kawasaki Ninja, but it was good. And this one is in the game as standard, and that is, of course, Triumph's naked bike or city bike, the Speed Triple. Great bike, very popular in real life, and although I'm not a huge fan of city bikes, generally speaking, although in more recent years I've become more of a fan of them, this one is a bike that I used to use quite a bit, and in fact it's one of the easiest bikes in the game to actually attain, because it's only 11 and a half grand. So it's not just one of the cheapest bikes, it's one of the cheapest vehicles. And that I think kind of comes out of the blue, because usually in the bike world you think of Japan as having the best prices, or at least the best bang for buck when it comes to value. They're kind of like the car equivalent of America, because America gives you so much power for such a low amount of money. Not all the time, of course, but usually. And Japan is kind of that for bikes, with Hondas, Yamahas, Kawasaki's, Suzuki's. But this one is a great example of Britain doing a similar thing. Now, of course, you don't get the sheer power or even the absolute overwhelming speed of something like a, a sport bike, but what you do get is a very, very good city bike. It's not as quick as an MV Augusta Brutale, not necessarily as quick as the Kawasaki, I believe it's the Z1000 in the game, if I recall, but it is very, very good, especially for handling. And of course, anyone who's familiar with Triumph motorcycles won't necessarily be surprised by that. They're kind of known for being good handling bikes, be it the Rocket 3 for what it is, or this for a naked bike, or even the Daytonas from the 675 to the 955 to the 650. They're good bikes. They're known for being good bikes, and this one is no exception. Now, it's a motorbike category B vehicle, which is not too surprising. It's got a 1050cc engine. It's a triple, of course, as the name suggests and you've got 128 horsepower with 77 pound-feet of torque. So that's actually not bad. You know, a one liter, technically an 1100, but not quite really. And it's not too heavy either. It weighs 189 kilos. No fairing, of course, by definition. And it's actually very compact as well. In fact, physically speaking, it may well be the smallest bike in the game. Not necessarily the lightest, but the smallest, I think there's a pretty good argument to be made there. Now, in terms of performance, it's good. You could see the specs at the start of the game. And if I recall, I think you can tune this up as well. Although, again, don't expect it to take on Envy Augustas and Ducatis because, of course, they're the best things out there. But for very early on kind of stuff, it's an excellent choice to go for. And it doesn't quite have that middle ground that, for instance, the Ducati 1000 Supersport has, which kind of falls somewhere between a full-on sport bike and a naked bike. It has the advantages of both. This isn't necessarily that good, but it is still very good. And as far as city bikes go, it's more affordable than the Brutale. Not necessarily as pretty, but a great little choice to go for. And even though it isn't the most powerful thing around, the 0-60 time is still under 3.5 seconds. It's 3.3 seconds stock. That's pretty good for its power. And the top speed is 155, which again is pretty impressive. And of course, in Test Drive Unlimited, you can push forward on the controller and duck down and get about 5 to 10 miles an hour more top speed out of pretty much any bike so when you factor that in you're looking at around 160 maybe a little bit more even for this bike now i didn't use this one a huge amount because i did honestly tend to go for the ducati 1000 instead the the super sport as i mentioned or even the brutale for a pure naked bike but this one is so much more affordable as i said and it's more beginner friendly I would say. This might actually be the most beginner-friendly bike in the game. The handling is so responsive, it gives you plenty of feedback, and because, especially, it's so physically small, you can duck and dive through traffic with it so easily, you can throw it through corners, and even though it's not the fastest thing around, it's, generally speaking, fast enough 
to win a lot of bike races. And it's certainly more than fast enough to outrun a lot of lower level cars as well. Your Audi TTs, even something like a Mercedes SLK 55, those kind of moderate performance cars. Of course, you can easily dispatch them with a 3.3 second 0 to 60 time. That's supercar territory, which isn't surprising at all from a bike. So all in all, although this bike won't blow your mind <laughs> by any stretch, it's not necessarily trying to. It's not as exotic as a Ducati. It's not as exclusive as an MV Agusta. It's not as rabid as a Kawasaki, but it does offer a nice little British flair into the game And it's a totally different bike to many of the others as well in terms of how it looks how it sounds Certainly how it performs and even how it handles It's a more normal bike You could say the kind of thing that you can imagine seeing on the street and here in the UK You certainly do see them on the street something more on the level of like a Ducati monster as an example But that much more attainable overall if you're looking for a good lower level, say starter bike, it's a good one to go for. But you will probably find that you'll move on from it to something else, maybe a Ninja or a Ducati, fairly quickly. But overall it was still cool to see Triumph in the game and I only wish that we could still access DLC, or at least I can't, on the Xbox because I would love to be able to review the Daytona 955i as well, which was a significantly faster Triumph to have in the game. But that's it for this review. Of course, I'll see you guys next time, and click the playlist here on screen to see all of my other bike reviews, not just from Test Drive Unlimited, but from all other games that I've played with them as well. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.